All right. Uh, so everybody, welcome. Uh, we are here to chat about 2020 and what it did in in the world of Vintage <laughs> History Draft. So this is St. Lotus VRD. We uh, we rebranded ourselves right before uh, the garbage fire that was 2020. Uh, the the committee that uh, kind of volunteers our time to keep this thing going and work on the logistics. We talked about it and. We wanted a better name, and we came up with St. Lotus. And this, we had our draft right after our January or February draft, whatever it was. Uh, we had um, Theros Beyond Death in it. Um, I think one of the few cards to make an appearance there. There was a few, um, but uh, Underworld Breach, of course, one, one of the big that ones. That was huge. Uh, it didn't end up in a good deck. It didn't do anything. Uh, <laughs> but the card uh, has, has since shown in other like electronic versions to continue to, to be good. Uh, but right after that, of course, Garbage Fire begins, and we have no more VRDs until coming up. Uh, at the end of July, we are going to have our next VRD, and it is this time V stands for vaccinated. Uh, it is our one rule uh, that you have to partake in this one that you have to have your two pokes. Um, you know, so we can be as safe as possible. Or here. one poke if you're into the J&J yeah, &J yeah. thing. Th true, absolutely. Your, your legal amount of pokes required for whatever uh, version <laughs> you have. Uh, but yeah, so this is Stephen Hagen and Mark Katerberg, and we are here to talk. Uh, we're probably going to try to do three of these beforehand. Uh, Hopefully, yeah. Because we got a lot of cards to cover. Uh, <laughs> they, you know, normally we would do one right before each VRD, and we'd have a set, maybe two, mm -hmm. depending. Yeah. But this year we have... A whole lot of sets, and as you all know, uh, Wizards also has cranked up the set production, which means... It's been a lot. It's been a yeah, year. It, it's it's a, a lot year. of cards. So today we're going to kind of do an overview of the sets of 2020. Um, yep. And for anybody that's not familiar for some reason, Vintage Rotisserie Draft, obviously, it's every card that's legal and vintage. You can draft any of them, and it goes around in a snake draft back and forth uh, where every person gets to pick... 40 to 45, depending on which exact one you're playing in. Uh, and then you build a, a 40 card deck out of those cards. Yeah, and we do 45. We do the three three mm -hmm. packs. Um, you know, they're, and it gets wild. Uh, you know, in the past, I've talked to it and compared it to, in some ways, Commander. I don't think that's a perfectly at metaphor since I've made that comparison, though I think there's definitely still elements. Just because something's good in Vintage doesn't mean it's good here because you don't have the redundancy yep. that you have in Vintage. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that you get to do that you probably just don't get to do elsewhere. Um, some of these, you know, we have actually talked about, for example, the draft matter order, uh, the draft order matters cards. Which um, is one of the ones that's on screen right now, actually. Yeah. So uh, Ether Searcher has become a big uh, one card combo. Um, you you draft this bad boy very early, and then you draft a card right after it that's just going to keep copying or win. I can't remember. Exactly how <laughs> it does things and it wins. Is this card resolves, you win the game. Yeah, and you can obviously tinker for this one. Right. Um, th there's all sorts of uh, all sorts of shenanigans that could occur. I think there's like St. Lotus has been the only place that's ever actually allowed these cards to play. Uh, well, we actually the recent one online they had it in there. Uh, they in in the one that's getting played right now. I think so. Mm -hmm. I looked at the they, list. Okay. They, they in one of the had... last two they've had. It was on there that's for sure. It. That's fair. So. In general, though, most most yeah. uh, most vintage history drafts disallow the draft matters cards, or rather, clarify a difference between draft matters, uh, drafting a card and picking a card. Right. And I think that's probably what we're going to end up going with for the next one. Uh, it just ends up one card combos. As much as we love, uh, as much as we love Time Vault, one card combos on their own are really not particularly fun. Right. So uh, we don't want people to be pulling card cards out of their sideboard and killing their opponents with them uh, off of a single five minute card. So, right. Sorry, Lane. I think you've, you've managed to kill the format. Yeah. Uh, so. Good job, Elaine. Great job. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's break into 2020. All right. You've kind of done the analysis, so I'm going to be yeah. uh, relying on you. So as, as our tradition has kind of been, like, I pick out some cards, and then Mark shoots me down and tells me I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and, uh, but this time I think I did a pretty good list. I, I, have, I had one on here that I'm actually dropping off. Um, I had made a – there was a, a line between Luminous Broodmoth and Shark Typhoon. And Ooh. I cited on Luminous Broodmoth originally, thinking as an out, I listed it as a super outside shot just because it can go infinite. But after looking at some other recent lists from online versions, I think Shark Typhoon is more likely of our first one to see play. As Mark mentioned earlier, it pitches to force, and that always helps. Um, so the powerful uh, wind, wind and water storm of sharks, though quite costly, 
Uh, its ability to cycle and just make a guy is uh, pretty saucy already. Mm -hmm. And in a very, just a straight control shell, the thing about VRD is that it can be lightning fast, and these games can also just go very long. So sometimes that kind of mana cost is not as big of a deterrent as you think. Um, I don't think it's necessarily going to be an all-star, but I think it, it, it can be drafted, and it will be drafted, and I think it can do work in the right deck. Yeah, I mean, the most recent draft that's going on, I think it actually just finished right now. Um, that one, Shark Typhoon, saw play, and it actually got drafted decently early. Yeah. The interesting thing there, I think, is they had seven blue drafters, so I think I, I think that's a little unusual, but... Uh, Shark to Tupac is still going to be good. I mean, it's never it's never going to be a bad card. It's, it replaces itself. It generates a guy. It right. gives you two for one. Uh, I think you're right that it's probably going to mostly see play in those control, ma yeah. control mirror matches. Uh, the next card is a high chance. I, I think this is co pretty close to a lock to see play, and that is Dranith Magistrate. Uh, yeah. So this one really depends on whether we uh, whether we receive the white weenie champion himself back again, John Ryan. Right. Do, uh, do we get a white weenie advocate or somebody that's going for that that type of shell? Um, but basically, this stops any Yogg's Wills. This stops, you know, any type of casting cards. This would actually that was out stop um, the search ether searcher we just mentioned because it's sure. trying to cast a card that wasn't in your hand. Uh, so it's a very powerful effect on a one three body. Um, it will generally see some type of white prisony type effect, and I, I this is a card that out of Ikoria that I think we'll see play. Interestingly, the shell also shuts down Fortel, so if uh, mm -hmm. if uh, saw it coming, ended up seeing play, uh, or whatever the three mana Wrath is, sees play. Right, Doom uh, Scour, Doom yeah. Scar. It's not, it's not a zero chance. Right, no, absolutely. Yeah, General um, Adventure seems pretty good. I mean, I, I don't think it's going to guarantee if there's a white weenie shell, but it's probably like I don't know in the top twenty. Yeah, a couple more outside, a couple outside shot cards for my Coria uh, that I think are interesting, and one of these is this Call of the Death Dweller. Um, you know, the fact of this is that in the right deck, in a low to the ground kind of black discard deck with little bodies, um, in a Luris deck, uh, which we're going to be talking about soon, right? Um, this gets two guys back, or two dudes back for very low mana. Um, and that's pretty potent. Uh, you know, I don't necessarily think it, it's amazing, but I could see this card being drafted, uh, and I could see this card doing well. It just gets value. Yeah, I mean, I could see it in basically a Pakula shell, kind of like the one I drafted in VRD1, mm -hmm. uh, where you end up with Bob, and you end up with, uh, what is the mind, whatever the creepy little uh, bug is. You know what I'm talking about? The two-mana uh, enchantment creature that steals a card out of their hand. Oh, yeah, that Brain Maggot. Brain Maggot, yeah. yeah. So I could see this playing along with Brain Maggot. Yeah, it gets a Brain Maggot and a Tide Hollow Skuller back, right? The trouble is it can't get back both of them at the same time. So that, this is where the problem, I think, for Lies, uh, is that you really need one mana creature to go along with these kind of two mana okay, disruptors. Okay, that's right. It's, three, it's up to three CMC total. Exactly. Right. So, so I, I don't know what one mana creature fits into the shell. Like maybe if you're in a Carnophage build and a black yeah. aggressive deck or something. As I said, it's pretty fringe, but I was just looking through at cards. I said, you know what? I could I, I could see myself drafting that if I had the right deck. Sure. I, I think it's got enough value. Yeah, I don't, but that's okay. I, I can see where you're coming right. from. Uh, Sprite Dragon is another one that's very on the fringe. Um, there's always a blue red, uh, blue red Spell Slinger deck mm -hmm. of some type. I think generally those decks just have better cards. Uh, this card is powerful in a lot of formats. I don't necessarily think it's going to be good enough here, uh, but I could see someone trying it. Yeah. Um, it, it, it seems like a it seems like a little bit worse Delver, and Delver doesn't see that much play, but it's possible. Right. right. All right, let's move to I'm gonna just not list a couple of these cards that I think you know are fringe here and there. Cards like uh, Riel or Fiend Artisan. Uh, I, Riel, there's always a wheel deck, so that that is a possibility. Uh, but I don't think you need to say much more than that. I mean, it's just really good with wheels. Fiend it kind of feels win more to me. Yeah, but yeah. Fiend Artisans, there's just better versions of what it does. I strongly agree with that yeah. one. So I just don't think it deserves too much attention. Though if it showed up, I wouldn't be shocked. Yep. Um, I just don't think it would be good. Uh, and then we get to the big ones, and that, of course, is the Companions. Yeah, um, Luris is going to be so hot. I'm very excited for this. So uh, the interesting thing about Luris is, obviously, pre the Companion rule switch, yep. Luris would uh, probably have been the best card in the format. <laughs> uh, I, I don't agree, but I think it would be very good. Right, very high. It would be yeah. a top four pick really easily. Uh, you know, and, and it has been in, other, in some of these electronic ones that do them asynchronously and things like that. Sure. Uh, one of them evidently did a, a Loris ban after it kind of dominated. Interesting. Like, they banned it in outside of where it was banned in Vintage? Because obviously you couldn't play it when it was banned in Vintage. You couldn't play it at all when it was banned in Vintage? Correct. They banned it. Cause, because oh, it I forgot that. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. It, they I, I forgot it. that it was banned. I thought, yeah, duh. That's right. 
That was yeah. the only vintage band, right? Because the rest of it is just correct. Yeah, that's yeah. the last vintage band since Shaharazad or something. Okay, so okay, that was that makes more sense. That, that yeah. makes sense. So yeah, they lost it during the vintage band. Uh, it is still just super powerful, right? Mm-hmm. It is. Uh, it does so much. It gets back. You know, even though it's just one car at a turn, you know, you can play low to the ground. There are some really interesting interactions with some newer cards coming out. Uh, one thing to remember is that it just has to have the CMC or whatever they call it nowadays with the new changes. Mana value. Mana value. Uh, so kickers still uh, can be paid, right? Yep. Uh, so you're you're getting your Lotus back, you know, if you've got a Lotus, things things like that. So uh, super powerful. Uh, it is a for sure play. It will be drafted uh, by our group. I, I 100% agree. It's just yeah. the, the fact that you don't have to put it in your deck and it's still, oh, it adds an eighth card to your hand. Right. It's just incredibly powerful. These games tend to either end on turn three or end on turn 17. Right. So in those later games, it's going to be incredible. Even it, and the thing is, is even if it doesn't, um, even if they don't reach the companion threshold, they sure. will still play it, right? Yeah. Like if you go turn one Lotus, you can play this off the Lotus and then replay the Lotus. Yeah, I don't think you. I don't think you want to put this card in your deck. Uh, but I oh, could, I disagree. Really, I disagree. I, I think th- I think there will be enough decks that can afford this, right? There's so right. many storm and spell heavy decks, like the the blue counter spell decks. True. You run blue black counter spells. You don't need anything over three anyway. Right. Um, the real question is: Is dead weight going to make a play? Hmm? I, dead weight's good. I yeah. mean, it, it it does its job. There's a lot of little dorky dudes in this format, and you know, repeating dead weight would be solid. So. Yeah. I, I could see, I mean, I don't know if this has ever seen play. I would very much doubt it. Right. But I, it might see play with Valuris. I haven't seen that art for Deadweight. That's cute. It is very cute. <laughs> uh, the what next one it? is Lutri. This is one that for sure is not going to make the main deck. No, but it is a lock, right? Yes. Uh, you know, this is one that, so the same reason that uh, Commander banned this as a companion or in the deck at all, Bandit, is the same benefit that we have here. Yep. You're going to have no non-land duplicates, uh, so you can automatically play it as your companion. Um, free card. It's it's going to see play, and it's going to be packed, picked relatively high within the top 10. You know. Within top 10, really? Mm-hmm. That seems aggressive to me. Like I think it's a fine card. I don't think that it's going to be competed over that much, but we'll see. Okay. I don't know. Uh, it, it certainly is going to see play. Like No doubt right. will absolutely be drafted. I just see it more as like a thirtieth pick as opposed right. to. Well, a I mean, if we look at some of the other of the other groups, it has seen dra- has been drafted as high as like four. Wow. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, I'm I'm very likely and, to be wrong. Yeah. But. So. And then the other uh, of the companions, I think, is very likely to uh, see play. I don't have this one as a hundred percent lock, um, but in the right deck, this is definitely a very 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 high chance. Is my, my good friend Zerda the Dawn Waker, uh, the Elemental Fox. So yeah, what is why does this play? What, what happens with this one? So if you've got Mana Vault, uh, not Vault, if you've got Grim Monolith, sorry, mm-hmm. it does not Vault has the different. If you've got Grim Monolith, um, you go Infinite Mana. So it is another tool to go Infinite Mana with Grim Monolith. Sure. And then also just other cards that allow you to very easily do things like. Um, so what do you need something to do with that mana? Okay, well you've got uh, Staff of Domination, which allows you to draw your deck, mm-hmm. things like that as well. Uh, so it's just very easy and. In the deck, I think it's also very easy to get this card as a companion, right? Planeswalkers have an activated ability. True. So if you're looking at kind of an artifact, kind of if you look at something similar to my first VRD with a uh, Planeswalker artifact control. Was this the Karn deck you played? Yeah, the Karn deck. Yep. Like, you know, I it wouldn't have worked as a companion there, but like you take a list similar to that and tweak it. Mm-hmm. I think you could make it as a companion relatively easy uh, and just have a very easy tool to get infinite mana with. Uh, that has you know pretty good other value as well. So yeah, I mean uh, this this feels like it slots right into a welder deck, right? Right. I don't know. Welder, it, goblin, engineer. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it seems it seems very strong. Uh, and then the fourth companion that could make a splash. This is the outside reach. I think it's one of the more powerful uh, in a lot of ways, and it obviously has been in many formats. Mm-hmm. But I don't. The the cost makes it harder here. It's because it's definitely not going to see play as a companion. No. I so agree. the cost is you're going to have to run a main deck, and that's why I think it's probably a no yeah. uh, out of the big. Big companions. I think you're right. I, th- I think uh, you're spot on that Luris is absolutely going to see play. Lutri is going to see play. Yeah. And Zerda will see play if there's a deck that wants a right. Zerda, uh, obviously. But this, this one, I, I don't see a home for it. I mean, you, you have to run it in the main deck because, like you said, you can't run a 60 card deck in this format very right. easily. Uh, yes. And if you're running it in the main deck, you're paying five mana to flicker. Like, this, this requires some pretty heavy flicker effects. Yeah. Um, the maybe a, a mono blue deck that just runs counter spells, but at that point 
you're flashing in. At, at that like, point, you want something to flash. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which actually brings me to a card that I, I was should have been in the earlier list. Uh, so Cody Owen, a couple of BRDs ago, ran a, a pretty decent flash list. Like it didn't perform as well as I thought the deck did. Uh, mm-hmm. as this deck was, and Elaine thought the same thing. And that is the Cunning Knight Bonder. Um, and I may have the name wrong here, actually. <laughs> uh, let's see. You said Cunning Knight Bonder? Yeah, there it is. Yeah, okay. So... Oh, yeah, I've, I've played this card in draft. It's not very good. Right, but in a flash list in, <laughs> yes. in this format, right, where every single one of your cards has flash. Mm-hmm. And, like, blue-green flash, um, the fact that they can't be countered mean makes it, I think, a lot better here. So how soon until Mark Rosewater finally uh, rattles every instant to be a sorcery with flash? Because that makes this card much better. <laughs> All right. This is an outside shot. I do think the flash list is interesting. I mean, you get a run, you get Snapcaster, you get uh, Brazen Borrower and Vendillion Click mm-hmm. and Night, uh, Night Pack Ambusher. And I think that it's in just a lot of counter spells. I think the list is yeah. pretty interesting. And I think this gives it some interesting reach. Uh, you don't main deck it, I don't think, in that list. Really? Well, you might. It depends on it the thing. I mean, I mean, it pitches to force. Right. Yeah, it does push the force. <laughs> right? Like every other card in the format, it's great. And then the other card, and we just have to bring up one of them, uh, the, of course, the other five cards that are going to see play is the Triomes. Yeah, these are going to be obviously mainstays of the format. Fetches are already incredibly strong. Right. And the Trilands already see play. Yeah. yeah. Well, very Very little. But I've seen Crumbling Necropolis. Yep. Uh, Elaine has drafted it a couple times for us. Uh, Savage Lands has been drafted. If this card didn't see didn't have cycling, it would still see play at a pretty regular beat, I right. think. Yeah. So I you know, I think the triums any three color deck, um, especially ones that aren't trying to be lightning fast, mm-hmm. will will want these. I mean it turns on check lands, like it it turns on so many things. Yeah. So so it the turns on both triumphs. sides of the check what, what do they call the other check lands? The ones that come into play, the buddy lands. They it turns on buddy lands and right. check lands. I, I think these cards are amazingly good. Yeah. So Ikoria actually, you know, for a set, uh, ends up having the you know more locks than I thought it would. A lot of that has to do with the companions and the triumphs. Uh, and then it has some good, decent outside shots, right? Some cards that could see some fringe play. Um, Ikoria Commander, on the other hand, don't forget Ikoria had, uh, has a card. Is this one of those, like, things that got bundled with but wasn't really part of no, the set? No, this was called, they, this was Commander 2021. Okay. So this was the, so they have, the, those were the Zendikar Commander decks. Got they it. were bundled with the, the Zendikar, but they only had like four new cards in each deck. They were I mostly see. reprints. The Ikoria Commander was Commander 2021. Got it. Um, and there was one card that has some potential, but the big, fact that Elaine will. currently lives in Canada um, <laughs> lowers that potential significantly. Right? True. Uh, Elaine is a, a massive lover of the giant flying whale here. Uh, that said, it's still good and still has potential. Yeah. It, it, so this card obviously doesn't have flash. It's really slow. It comes into play late in the game. Uh, and if it does get to attack, you probably win the game. But yeah, it, the, it's incredibly slow. Right. Um, I think this probably falls into the same camp as the, the kind of uh, Tassiger and some of those cards, but they it get drafted feels substantially lower to me. Yeah, and, but as I said, if Elaine was here, it would be a win. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, would I can't imagine her not playing it. All right, next up we have Zendikar Rising. Okay. Um, so much much fewer cards here. So lots of landfall and things are going to make up splashes. Yeah, there, there's some landfall. I mean, you could see some cards. Like I didn't put it on my list, but the like. Avengers of Zendikar sees some play. So whatever the fixed red green Avengers Zendikar, there's it's no bad. Way. There's I, no I, way. I didn't. <laughs> Someone might try it. Yeah. They're wrong. Yeah. I think that's pretty spot on. And that's okay. Right? Just like Elaine and her whale. Right. <laughs> but this card. This, this card, card seems great. Um, I, so I, I think this card probably is a little bit of a trap. I think that this card's combos and standard may make people think it's uh, the kicker. You know, that makes it seven mana uh, with the kicker. Yeah. Uh, but just for the value of the lower amount, I think this card, you know, just for the first one, Makes it as, as a fringe playable. I, I could see it coming out uh, to get that quick, easy spell. It doesn't have flash, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if somebody tries to put together some kind of combo with it. Yeah, I mean, what do you wh- like? What is the dream scenario? Is it turn three you cast this and a ponder, and you get to end up with like a kind of bad version of Snapcaster Mage? I've got thoughts, but I don't want to give away someone's tech. Ooh, so yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I, yeah, I don't see the. I, I believe this card will get played because right. of what you said, right? It has good standard memory. It has 
it looks powerful. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it will do some things. Uh, I think that if we end up with a really creature-heavy meta, it can be particularly good. But I just don't. I don't see it. Uh, if it had, if it, it had it flash, I would see it much higher. I right? agree. Yeah. yeah, with with flash, I think it's arguably as good or better than Snapcaster Mage. Yeah. The next one up is a uh, white stacks play. Okay, uh, so another John Ryan special. Yep, another John Ryan special. Uh, this is a card I would play. Um, so silence effects C play. Silence on a body with a little bit of bonus love seems good. Uh, this is a rule of law, sir. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, not, yeah, sorry. Rule of law. I forgot my you can't play cards. Oh, wait, actually, up. no. I, I actually get slammed. It's Arcane Laboratory. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Got to get the old <laughs> gotta, gotta the oldest, oldest humanly possible here. Yes. Right? Uh, so, yeah. I mean, it's an Arcane Laboratory on a 2-3 flying body. Cost is probably a little bit higher than what you want, but, mm-hmm. you know, you're already slowing them down in that deck anyway. Um, and then a nice added bonus that non-basics, which, you know, there are enough of, you know, it gets to slow them a little bit. Yeah, I mean, three mana Thalia, does she see play already? Uh, both Thalias have seen play. The yes. three mana sees play less than the two mana, but but both have seen play. If, yeah. three, if three mana Thalia sees play, then this should as well, I think. Right. I, that seems pretty spot on. I, I think it's probably not going to see a lot of play. Right, but right. It has a, it looks very similar in body to this. Right, exactly. Obviously, this is a little more aggressive. That one has flying. Um, that one has an other ability. And this one shuts off creatures as well. So. Right. They, they're not exactly the same, but I think that they're like decently comparable. Uh, the next one up is Glass Pool Mimic. Okay. Um, so the, the limit of this is that it hits your own creatures only. The yeah. ultimate upside is it's also a land. Sure. Um, you know, I could definitely see running this. Uh, I don't know. I played this a whole lot, at, a whole, whole lot in uh, Arena Cube. And it never failed to make me unhappy when I had it in my deck. Uh, and I, so I think here, just the, the fact that it, it's good value for you uh, in the right kind of deck. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what that deck is. Um but I could definitely see myself running it if I've got you know good blue cre- good blue or green type creatures, and the fact that the upside is it's a land at a pinch, which doesn't hurt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, does does black blue rogues actually turn into a thing now? I don't have it on my list, but maybe. I, like I could see it. Yeah. I mean, it's been seen a lot of play in standard. There's a lot of good rogues outside of there that have like really been explored that much. Right. Um, I could see it happening. I mean, I, I, th- I think a lot. I think there's actually cards you don't have on your list that have the backside. That could I also see play, like the red one that uh, just shoots for one damage. Right. Like right. the lava dart, I think could see play. I think that even Hagra Mauling with the destroy four creature. mana destroy, it's a little cheaper if they have. Yeah, that's that's true. I don't I don't think it's good. Uh, but I, I think, think the, I think the lava dart over Hagra Mauling. I think yeah. Yeah. Uh, Val- do do you have Valakut on your list? No, Val- I don't. Oh, okay. That's one that might. Uh, what is it? It's the. So there's there's Valakut Awakening is one. Right. I'm just oh, steal, yeah. stealing your list from you. I think yeah, this no, might play as a wheel. Um, once again, because it has the backside. Right. Uh, and then there's also the uh, the fireball version of the same thing that right. comes into play untapped. The big, the big one, the rare one. Yes. Right. Yeah. No. Uh, any of the ones with the land, I think, have that. I mean, I mean, I think most of the rare ones are bad. I think you're right. Uh, um, the fireball but probably. The being downside the better... is so good, right? right? Like I, the fact that you can just play them as a land in fail case. Their fail case ends up being very good. Right. So that's I, true. I could. I would not be surprised if any of these cards end up seeing play, uh, sure. even if I don't think they're particularly amazing. It's just they're so versatile. Okay. Yeah, I'll buy that. I think that's good analysis. Uh, the next up is uh, another John Ryan special. Um, Man, we really need to get that guy out of this format. I know. Uh, Skyclave Aberration, right? This is, a, again, just a card that is super flexible removal. Mm-hmm. Uh, its limit, of course, is it can only hit CMC4, but it hits anything. Yeah, what was the last time you saw somebody fairly play a card that cost more than four? Right. Uh, and the downside is whatever, to be yep. honest. I mean, and it, the thing is, is they don't get the card back. They just get the little whatever dude. Um, so powerful removal, um, you know, abusable with blink, things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, very fun to pull back from your graveyard. You know, I don't think it's a lock and load, but I, I, you know, I think in the right deck, this is very good and very powerful. And if this is probably very unlikely to happen, but you can oblivion ring trick this as well, where you put it into play and then blink it in response to its trigger. Right. The old school oblivion ring trick. Yeah. Right. This, the, it, unlike all the fixed wordings on the new stuff. Right. So if we, if somebody were to cast... Uh, do a blink deck, maybe with a Yorian or something, and right. then play Ephemerate. Uh, you can play in that and then Ephemerate it in response to the trigger. And they don't get the first. Permanently exile their creature. Yeah. Right. Uh, the first time, and then get a second one as well. Right. Not? Um, yeah. And then great. the last one are the Pathway Lands. Sure. Uh, so these, I, I have been slowly more and more impressed with these in Commander. Um, 
So the thing I, could, I, I, I think on this is you're not in three colors. There's de- uh, very little downside of this. Agreed. Even in three colors, like, a lot of the times, unless you're in a heavy deck that has a lot of double casting costs, this is just just as good as anything else, as, as any of these other duels. A lot of the times, in my experience, it wasn't color, like, you know, it wasn't I needed both. I needed one or the other. Sure. The flexibility of having one or the other w- w- was important. I didn't need it to be both constantly. Um so I just think that these are very effective. They don't come and play tapped. They give you that flexibility. Um, you know, two color decks in particular, maybe some three. I, I just don't see people not drafting these. So the downs, I, I think that it's pretty inevitable that these will see play, not because I think they're good, but because I think other people are going to go through the same calculus you did. I don't necessarily love them. I don't, I don't, I dislike them because you play one side and then you can't use the other side the next turn. So right. you're right, the double mana cost is the biggest problem, but the other cost is that if I need a black mana on turn one and a red mana on turn two, I can't do it. So yeah. I think it's only in two color decks. Uh, in those two color decks, that you're also shutting your down your probabilities of playing the buddy lands and check lands. So I think that you're giving up a fair amount. Yeah, but you're getting the filter these. lands, which you, I think are better than the buddy lands and check lands anyway. Sure, but you want all those, right? right. Um, so basically, I think that there's so many lands in this format that these will almost assuredly get drafted. I, I don't know if it's correct to do so it won't be a full cycle get drafted no no, no i agree no, yeah not. these are kind of in the same like these are going to see probably as much play as the like m10 lands do the check right. lands um I, I don't think they're bad uh but i think that there are probably lands like the filters that should be drafted much higher than these okay. uh and yeah I, yeah I, I i've been saying for a long time the filters are criminally underdrafted i, I, I think that they're phenomenal in this format so but yeah i think this is better than a basic obviously yeah. uh and i think that it's if you don't have high uh, sideboard necess- necessities, mm-hmm. then you should probably be drafting more lands. Right. So. Well, and I think the other thing on these is that if you want to get some fixing late, these are going to be very easy to grab some fixing late. Very true. So. Yep. Yep. I, I, they will inevitably see play. Yep. I don't think they're going to... They're probably going to be like 30th pick. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up, Commander Legends. Commander Legends. When did that come out? Came out in December. Ooh, okay. Uh, and we're going to go back to 2020. Well, there's just a couple sets I missed. And I did this in a past. I was like, oh, I missed two sets. Why? Because <laughs> there was too many sets sure. in 2020. There were a lot. Uh, all right, so Commander Legends. Um, not as many cards, actually, as I thought there were going to be, right? Like, I was looking through it, and I was expecting a lot of broken stuff, but there's really two, um, and they are lock and loads. Yeah, this one is blew me away when I read it. Yeah. It's just like, okay, well, I guess we need another NAR set, because drawing seven cards is unfair already. Right. So, of course, the first one of these is uh, a free frequent uh, kicking boy, kicking dog, uh, kicking bird, whatever we want to call it, and the commander uh, frequently complained about, and that is Hull Breacher, a 3-2 flash, mm-hmm. that if an opponent would draw a card, except the first one they would draw on their draw step, so this isn't each turn, it's just their draw step, you get a mana instead, right? Yep. You get a treasure. Uh, so 3-2 flash body on, a, on for three in this format, this is a lock and load, right? Yep. Uh, obviously, the wheel deck, which is, there's always a version of it, very likely run by Brandon Curry, uh, <laughs> will will want this. And even without the wheel deck, right? Like the blue green flash deck I talked about earlier, it wants this, right? Like yeah. it just, it's beautiful hate. Uh, any time twistery. Uh, yeah, this might actually make the ninth piece of power playable. That'll be exciting. Yeah. So. To go with that, the other lock and load, uh, probably a little less than Hole Breacher, uh, but you know, it won't go as high, is Opposition Agent, the other yeah. frequent commander kicking dog. Uh, the, I don't want to say kicking dog. It's horrible. I don't want to kick dogs. I don't want to kick people either. This Kicking card. There we go. Yeah. That, no one kicks cards. Yeah, yeah. no one kicks Your analogy is falling Kicking over. Kicking can. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going to shut up now. Move on. Uh, all right. Opposition Agent. So again, so we've got a 3-2 flash for three, uh, which is nice. But the fun is, is that when you flash this in, when they go to tutor or fetch, and the fetch, notice the fetch. This is why this card is better than we think it is in this format, right? Yeah. Like, not every deck has tutors, though enough do, right? Because mm-hmm. they're going to Tezzer it. They drop five drop Tezzer it, which is a frequent high pick for the Time Vault decks. Sure. You get to flash this in against Tezzer it while they're searching for the Time Vault and take a card instead. Wow. Right? But they they go to fetch. I had a, I had a dude rage quit against me, like, two weeks ago. Because I cast this in response to his Haro. Um, wow. And I was just, it was the first spell available, and I just wanted a basic. And he rage quit, right? Like, like you are strip mining them and ramping at the same time against a fetch. 
So, so this card, just walk me through it, because uh, there's a lot of words yes. on these cards, like every card in Magic now. Yes. Uh, they tutor. You flash this in. You they control have... their tutor. Okay, so you do, you actually control their tutor. Yes. They don't get to pick the card. And if you exile the card, you get to pick it. You may play those cards. You while an opponent is searching the library, they exile each card they find. You may play those cards for as long as they remain exiled, and you may spend as though it were mana of any color to cast them. So I'm reading this that they still get to pick the card. No, though. you control yeah. your opponents while they're searching their libraries. Oh God. Yeah, there's too many words on this card. Yeah. That's incredibly strong. Yeah, I, li I like it a lot. Yeah, you control your opponent while they're searching. So yep. while they're searching, they, they still have to exile it because it's still their deck. Yep, that makes sense. Right, but you control them, so wow. you get to choose. You get to make their choices for them. That's very good. Yeah, I mean, this this is yeah. going to see play. Yeah. Because so, if they if you didn't control them, they could just fail to find. Of course, yeah. Right, that, that's the... And then that would just be... Yeah, the second line is, is obviously... Right. Uh, of the, like, 12 lines on this card, that was the one that got me. Right. So, no, this seems seems obviously playable. Yeah, um, very much a lock and load. Uh, when it, does this get taken, though? Like, this seems, this seems good in a variety of decks, but it doesn't seem like a eight, linchpin of any deck. 8 to 15? Sure, okay. Yeah, I yeah. believe that. Yeah. I've got a deck in mind that if I end up having to... We, one of our normal crew may have to... Do, we're looking for people. One of our normal crew may have to play. Um, like, I think... I've got a deck in mind that this would be yeah. ex exceptional. In, so. I think we might actually have two people on, up in the commentary crew by this time. We're yeah. trying to keep the numbers smaller. With uh, Even with vaccines, we still want to keep the, the space pretty small. Yeah. Uh, so. But yeah, looking like end of July, early August. Yeah. yeah pretty, exciting. pretty exciting. Uh, so that's it. That's the Commander Legends, right? Uh, not as impressive as I thought it would be. Yeah. Um, we got two more sets. Core 2021 has three cards, and they're all maybes. Okay. First of these is a big green boy that has a lot of words. Mainly yes. Vigilance, Reach, and Trample. So, uh, I mean, this is a big, dumb green creature. It is, but it draws you cards. Eventually. Yeah. I don't... It doesn't have haste. This yep. is a big maybe. This is a big maybe. Um, it's a... It could be a fatty for green that does it. I think there's better fatties, but... I also wouldn't be utterly surprised. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, it wouldn't surprise me, uh, especially especially when you have people that are new to the format, especially that right. haven't been playing since '94. Uh, don't necessarily know all the old cards, yeah. and uh, they might go for one that they know that they've seen be good in standard and, and modern and historic. Exactly. So. Right. Uh, and the fact is, is that once this thing is rolling, it is really hard to stop. Sure. Right? I mean, it, it does have a lot of value to it, and you can cheat it out pretty quick in this format. Yep, it stops uh, the burn deck if, in case that happens. Right. Uh, it can go wide if somebody is trying to run them over, and it can draw cards against the control decks if you yeah. happen to get it through. Like, you can get this out really quick with the Ruffellos and start to do pretty abusive things. Yep. Yeah, it seems very strong. Uh, let's, uh, I, let's I still I give it probably a 10% chance. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. Let's go to the third one here, actually, next, because uh, this is another super outside shot, and that is Veto. Um... Only reason this card is on the list is because this is basically the second, the the new version of uh, Sanguine Bond, right? Which has infinite combos of I just win the game immediately. And it costs a whole but lot less. But it costs a whole lot less, right? No one's tried Sanguine Bond combo that I've seen because it costs a zillion mana and there's just other things you can do. I think someone might have back in one of the original WotC drafts. Okay. Like back, back when they had those three drafts in right. WotC headquarters ages ago. But... If I'm looking to uh, try that, I'm much more likely to try it with three mana. Yeah, I can see that. So and this this card, I think, really does make your point that this format is really uh, competitive commander crossed over with vintage. Right. So th this is kind of taking the CEDH mindset and uh, trying it out in vintage. We'll yeah. See. So don't no, no, necessarily. The third one, I've got a comparison to. Right. So let's go ahead and pull this up and tell me what you think before I make my comparison. Sure. Sublime Epiphany. So this card's really strong. Uh, I mean, the obvious comparison that jumps into my mind is Time Stop. Uh, I think it's just the mana cost. Okay. Uh, and it does kind of shut down the entire turn if it resolves. Um, I can definitely see it happening. Uh, it has so many abilities on it, right? Like, if it resolves, it's incredibly strong. It's just kind of... I think it would have to come out of the sideboard. It would have to come in against a fair deck or a deck like a discard deck. That when you top deck this at in the late game, you just can shut down their whole game plan. In those, it seems fine. My comparison is that Mystic Confluence has seen play in nearly every draft. True. And it's one more mana. That's right. interesting. So Mystic, Mystic Confluence, Confluence draws three cards. This Mystic, draws one. Right. Mystic, but this also then 
draws a card, makes a copy of a creature. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it does all of those things. You can do every mode, right? Yeah. So yeah, Mystic Confluence counters a spell. Mystic Confluence is a super effective card, right? That's true. It can destroy you three. It can super counter a spell. It can bounce three creatures. It can do what it wants. Sublime does the same thing for one more mana and also has some more combo-y type things that can go with it, right? Where you cast it, make a copy of a creature that then gets it, gets it back immediately to your hand, etc. Mm -hmm. like that. On top of count, uh, on countering their spell, drawing a card, etc. Again, I think that this this kind of wants to be in a more uh, a less focused blue deck, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mystic Confluence, I think, is wonderful because it, it stabilizes a blue deck against aggro, and it can act as a control, uh, like, counter draw two. Makes sense. Uh, it can draw three cards if you need to. Like, it has so much versatility. And I think this is, you need to already be playing creatures in your blue deck. Okay. And yeah. I, I, don't know, I, I can see it happening, right. but it, to me it very much feels like a, a sideboard card against fair decks for a blue deck that happens to be running creatures. Right. Like this theoretical rogues deck, I could see running one of these in the board. So I had this listed as an outside shot, but after looking through the list again before our show and seeing Mystic Conflicts being frequently, I'm going to move it to less likely, sure. but not an outside shot, right? Again, it just does so much. Yeah, I, I put it probably as like a one in three chance, is my where my rough odds are. Yeah, I see that. I even go as high as 50-50, honestly. Sure. Okay, uh, next up is the, the Strange Little Brew, the last thing of, not in the last in time order, but the last of my list of 2020, and that is Jumpstart. Jumpstart? I forgot that set existed. Is yeah. This, is this a, like a conspiracy type format? Uh, no, it was, like, so you bought it, and there was, like, basically, like, you got a pack, I'm pretty sure I didn't buy any of it, <laughs> and you got, like, you got the elf pack, you got all the elves in it. Okay. And then your thing was just you mash two packs together okay. and put lands in it, and then that was your deck. I actually played this right. on Arena a little bit. It was, it was really fun. I mean, I really enjoyed it, but yeah. there were not a lot of powerful cards in it. I was, I got elves one time. There was, was some mis I, mysteriously there was powerful cards. There was in one it. card right. that had one one mana elf. Yes, um, <laughs> there was a there was yeah there was not a lot of powerful cards. There was a lot of reprints, but there was also a lot of mysteriously powerful cards that have done quite well in, here and there. Okay. Um, Let's hear about them. The first one of these is I think a very long shot for this format, but. It does do enough, and like you said earlier, sometimes new players are going to rely on newer combos, right? Sure. Um, so speaking of Sublime Epiphany, right? Like yeah. you get back Sublime Epiphany, you make a copy of this, which gets back something else, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, I think if this sees play, it's going to see play in a Reanimator shell, okay. right? I'm not, I'm not cranking out seven mana just to cast this baby, uh, but it does. It was a cornerstone of the Ultimatum deck uh, recently in Standard. Sure. Uh, which I think the ultimatums, two of the ultimatums are super, super outside shots, right? Just because people might want to try them, though mm -hmm. I think they're not good for the format. Um, is this a potential finisher for a self-mill deck, like a landless deck, mentalist type draft deck? You mill your whole deck, you reanimate this, and that somehow causes you to win the game? I, maybe. I mean, smarter people than me would have to figure that out. Like the traditional, <laughs> the traditional one went through uh, through Sun Titan and things like that. But right. I, I think you might be able to pull it off with this one as well. So I could see it in, if somebody does try to go mentalist. Yeah. Right, because it gets instant sorcery or artifact card from your graveyard. Yep, I, I don't know why it's better than other cards, but it yeah. definitely like that part right there is pretty. Yeah. Pretty strong. This is a card I don't necessarily expect to see, but if someone breaks it, I'm not going to be surprised. That sounds right. Yeah, I, I agree right. with both those things. Yeah, uh, the next card is another uh, I, I think really good actually, and that is Tiny Bones. Oh, he's so tiny. That is the cutest name. Look at him, he's so tiny, and he's a rogue. Speaking sure. of your rogue deck, right? I don't think this goes in my rogue deck, but no. I do like it. Uh, so this card does a lot for you here, right? Um, this is your you're, you're making di people discard stuff. You're getting to draw cards for that and lose life. Mm -hmm. uh, this very much slots into your VRD one list, right? Yeah. Or this a, goes straight a to a pox list. white black dead man ale list. Yep. Uh, and you get the additional really nice part that you've shut them down at the end of the cards, and you just end the game. At, you know, if you drop this late game, you're you're you probably just like, okay, cool, pick ten, you're out. Yeah, I mean, drop this early game, honestly. Right. Like, yeah, you, anyway, as I was saying, you, it's got benefit late and benefit early. Yes. Right, like, so... Um, I think it, in that deck, if you get to turn six and you have this in play, you probably win the game, right? Because you're beating down with uh, with Kite Sail Freebooters and, and like, now, Brain Maggots and things. Now, thankfully, it is if an opponent discarded a card and not per card discarded, because sure. then, it, therefore, it doesn't go in the wheel deck, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, honestly, like, th that Pox list seems really strong. Yeah, so I think this card uh, is really good here in this format. Yep, I agree. This one, I don't think it's 
this is not a lock by any means, but if that deck gets drafted, right, which I think is like I think it's one of the top ten decks. Uh, yeah. If it does get drafted, I think it it sees play. Well, I mean, like Liliana the Veil, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it it's you know I just think there's a lot of stuff that this is really good for. And like that deck can go black. It can it, go, it obviously goes black. It can also go green or white or both. Uh, but yeah, it's great. Yeah. All right, next up, let's go with this boy here. All right. No, the f next one below that. We'll come back. We'll do that one last. Okay. Okay. Oh man! Speaking of decks that don't get drafted, that should be. Yeah, goblins has not been drafted. Not I, that I've seen. My, my notes on this says, "Nah, just kidding." I'd love it though. But Mark says, "I think it's good." I mean, no. yeah, goblin recruiter is really strong. I, I think this might be one of the rare chances where I think a card is better than you think. Right? Uh, isn't it goblin recruiter? Yeah, you, you left an R out. Ah, yeah. So this card is, uh, it was is still banned in Legacy. I'm pretty sure still banned in Legacy. Right. Uh, and. I mean, at some point, somebody's going to be like, I like goblins, I'm going to draft this deck. And I think they're going to do well with it. Um, it it's a one-card combo that f finishes your deck. You win off of some strange, like, goblin wizard or something, right. killing them on a combo. But Muxus taps into that real easy. Yeah, so... So I think Muxus is basically a second Muxus copy of is obviously order. super strong. Yes. I just don't think... I just don't know if anyone's going for goblins, is my opinion. <laughs> um, oh, oh, Brandon Curry, we are certainly not... Uh, it's certainly not canceled. I don't know if the new title is not showing up. Uh, but th we're just doing some card analysis here. We are absolutely not canceled. No. Uh, I mean, at some point, we might say the wrong thing on air and get canceled. But for right now, we are we are going to be <laughs> running live at and, the end of. And uh, you have been July. name dropped at least three times, sexy beast. True. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think Goblin Recruiter means that Muxus is going to see play. All uh, right. Speaking of things I've not seen play that I, I want, and this is the next one here. We have so a card, a, a, a format that I've given a lot of thought to. Uh -huh is mill tribal mill tribal okay. yeah um and i've never heard of this card before so <laughs> yeah oh my god no i mean it's a 40 card format right like we all know the power of mill in a 40 card format sure. and you get glimpse the unthinkable you get fr fr frayed sanity you get all these new you get the new super rune crab and the you know the old crab mm -hmm. hedron crab like there's just a lot of powerful mill cards and honestly like People are going to have to draft a sideboard card to stop it because other than discounter spells, there's not a lot to, to slow you down. Um, if Mill Tribal could be a thing, does this guy see play in there? Is it worth it? I don't know. I don't know if it's, it's worth it. I think maybe maybe you're already efficient enough. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Of course. Ultra the Brood does see play. Thank you. Uh <laughs> oh, that card's so bad. Yeah. Ultra the Brood is amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, every Ultra the Brood hits, every land, fetch land, he knows four cards with that guy. The new crab, though, is it Hedron something? Rune crab is the new one. Rune crab. Or uh, Ion. Like Ruin crab. Ruin, Got it. Your Midwest my, accent. Yeah, I'm a Midwest. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, this, this is Mill. Okay. I thought there yeah. was. No. I thought it was. Uh, I thought it exiled for some reason. Nope, Mill. Okay. No. Uh, yeah, it's strong. I, yeah. I don't know if it makes a three mana creature C play. Right. But other than that, like, I think that that deck is good. I'm just not sure this card is going to make it, even in that deck. And then the last card. The last. And this is a lock and loaded. The last lock and loaded for the draft is the little green dinosaur boy. Yeah, this card, this card it took a very good card that already saw play that cost two mana and did the same thing uh, and dropped its cost and made it uncounterable. Which card are you talking about? Herald of the something? Mm -hmm. This card's better. Yes, no, absolutely. Right. It's, it's because better. this card says green spells, not creatures. True. What is the, what card am I thinking of? You're thinking of, yeah, Herald of the Green? No, yeah, Herald of the Green. I know what you're thinking of. Gaia's Herald? That sounds... I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, sounds something like that. Right. Um, so in Commander, Destiny Spinner currently sees a lot of play, right? Um, Serpapod is another one that also sees play. and is Yeah, Serpapod. I, I've drafted Serpapod. does the same thing. Uh, this makes all your green spells, though, right? So this makes your Green Sun. This makes your uh, one that gives Infect and Trample. Yep. Triumph of the Hordes, right? Like, that's the extra potency of this card. Like, Destiny Spinner sees play in a lot of Commander. It's a 2-drop, two 2-3, two, which is already really good, and makes your enchantments and creatures yes. uncounterable. Uh, the card is exceptional. Uh, this one just says, okay, we're, we're going to make all green spells. And the first line, I think, is the killer, right? That yeah. this cannot itself be countered. It just, like, ends up shutting down the hard blue decks. Yeah. This seems incredibly strong. Yeah. So this is our last lock and loaded for the year of 2020 cards.
Yeah, this this seems this was a big year. I mean, it was. It was a lot I, of cards. I don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, there's a lot of cards that are available. I don't know what gets cut out. Um, it just depends on what what for, what people want to draft, right? I mean, what 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 things are they trying to do? And we, there's obviously a lot of established, um, you know, decks mm -hmm. that do well each time. Some of them in our VRD, some of them kind of come and go. Like oh, we we see Kiki, and the next time we may not see Kiki. Same thing um, with Reanimator. Yeah, Reanimator. Uh, so there's a lot of that. So I think it really just depends. Like, so some of these just may not if everyone tries other things. I, yeah, I'm very curious. I, I think I think what all of these things tell me is that VRD just keeps getting wider, right? Like, right. and obviously that is true in literal number of cards, but I think it's also true in archetypes. Like, it's very easy to see the eight to ten archetypes that get drafted a lot. But I think that the thing we've seen over the years is that there's just a lot of things that we didn't anticipate that are playable. Right. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Infect, by the way, this card with Infect. Yeah. It seems very good. Yeah. Uh, it's just, wow. I mean, all your, all your pump spells are green. Yep. You can't count on that. Uh, oh, God. So, yeah, we should be having two more of these. Yeah. Uh, so, before. next time we want to talk about, we're going to move into 2021 cards, um, which we have less. Now, the interesting thing, of course, on 2021 is where we have fallen into our time. Like, we were looking at late June, mm -hmm. which would have given us for 2021. Um, what would we have had here? We would have had a set of um, Modern, Modern Horizons would not have been out yet. Modern right? Horizons would have been out. Okay. Modern Horizons two would have been out. Yep. No matter what. Um, and then we have Strixhaven. Strixhaven is obviously going to have and, uh, some bangers in it. And what was the other? Was there a set before that? The year? I think the set before Strixhaven was. Was that just Indicar? Uh, no, it was Caldheim. Caldheim and Caldheim, yep. right? The, the snow set. Right. And then which is going to have a couple bangers as well. Yep. Um, but by being at the end of July, beginning of August, we pick up the Forgotten Realms set as well. That's going to be um, interesting. And uh, we've only seen a handful of cards out of that. Mm -hmm. But one, again, if someone wants to think about like a mill tribal, that Tasha's hideous laughter, um, <laughs> which is a two blue and one mill cards unt up until you mill a total of 20 mana cost. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's fair. I I don't know. Uh, I I think that that's putting a lot of hope on the fact that uh, mill travel becomes a thing. But if it does, that card's gonna see play. Do you think that card sees play outside of mill? Yeah, it is very strong. Yeah, I mean, I think just as a control, just getting rid of half their deck is you know sometimes whole all of their deck in this format. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, I I do. I think it sees play. Um, I think it's just really strong. So. So yeah, so we got those, and then the third third one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some of these, uh, some of the other VRDs. Mm -hmm. uh, our good our, our good friend hyphenated, uh, who friend of the program, uh, who does a whole lot of work cataloging and looking across, and is a massive VRD super fan. Yep. Uh, they've got a nice spreadsheet, and we're gonna kind of go through and look at what some of the other ones have done uh, that they did electronically. Uh, In fact, one just finished up. They're literally playing games tonight. Yeah. So it's pretty exciting for them. Uh, we decided against electronically. We, we, we talked about it a couple of times, but we just, with our group and what we have, we just didn't think it would work out. Yeah, um, it's a different feel. Yeah. So, but we're going to, in the third one, we'll talk about some of those existing archetypes and kind of talk about a little more about, well, where, what some of these new cards might break into those archetypes. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and it'll be pretty exciting. Uh, and then, again, hoping for the end of July uh, for the actual, uh, for the actual next live in-person vaccinated or history draft. Absolutely. So. Looking forward to seeing everybody. Uh, thanks for coming out and tuning in. Uh, we'll throw this on YouTube. Uh, and if you want to keep up with what's happening, there's a Discord that Hyphenated runs. So mm -hmm. uh, message, drop a message either in chat here or on uh, or on the on the YouTube channel or send a tweet at us, uh, St. Lotus MTG. That's where we are everywhere. So yep. send a message if you want to invite to the Discord and you can follow along and possibly play in the next one that he runs. So uh, talk to you all later. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot.